my name is Kelly Dale with Off The Beaded Path and I hope you're ready to learn a brand new project. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a new pair of bead embroidered earrings um, that I'm calling the Poppin' Paparazzi Earrings. Now, because we all wear masks and you have to be so careful about your earrings, I've actually made these with post, beaded post. Now, if you don't want to do a post, you do not have to. You can hang it from any sort of ear wire, but just know that these look really well on those posts. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're gonna need to get started. These are the earrings that we are going to be learning how to make today. So you can see here, this is beautiful shades of purple. Then I have some turquoise and browns here. And then I have this year's color of yellow and gray. So here's what you're gonna need to get started. You're gonna need some three millimeter pearls and it's gonna take probably about 70, 60 to 70 of these. Everywhere where you see the dark purple here, the brown here and the gray here. You're gonna need about a gram of a size eight seed bead. That size eight seed bead is gonna go here above the um, three millimeters. So it's the lighter color purple, it's this kind of turquoisey teal color, and then the yellow color. You are going to need about two grams, two to three grams of a regular size 11 seed bead. That's gonna go around your cab, it's gonna be between your threes, and then it's gonna go here at the top of your post. You're gonna need three grams of a size 15 seed bead. That is gonna go here around the top and around all of your edging. You're also gonna need some 3.2 teardrops. These are gonna go on the bottom of your earring. So they're here, here, and here. I'm using two 18 millimeter acrylic cabochons. Now you can use any 18s. I use the acrylic cabochon specifically because I wanted this to be a super lightweight earring. So 18 millimeter cab there, you're gonna need two of those. You are going to need an eight millimeter stainless steel or sterling silver, whatever you want, flat post and ear nut. And then I've got two oval jump rings here. You are also going to need 20 links of a two um, millimeter cup chain that is going to go right under each of your pieces here. I have two pieces of beading foundation that are approximately two and a quarter inches tall by two inches wide. And then I also have two pieces of felt. You can use ultra suede, whatever you want, of the same size as our ultra suede. I'm gonna be using 1G. You can use any sort of thread, a size 12 beading needle. I've got my cutter set out here. I have my beading all set out here. And you're also going to want a really nice sharp pair of scissors. You're also gonna need some E6000 glue to go along with this project. Before we get started today, I did want you to know that the beadboard I'm using today is by The Bead Wrangler. You can find her at etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash bead wrangler boards. This is the ultimate beadboard. This little thing here I'm using is called the No More Oops Bead Tray. You can find it at lakesidejewelry.etsy.com, same as here. And um, when you check out in the comment section, make sure to put Kelly Tray so that she knows where you have seen her tray at. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my um, beading foundation and I'm gonna be using my E6000 glue. Now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put some E6000 glue on the back of my cabochon. Now I'm just putting a very thin layer, just kind of spreading it all the way around the back of my piece. Now, when you look on the front of the cabochon, you will see almost like an X shape or a cross shape here. I want to try and keep this as straight as I can on the foundation. So I'm going to put it down kind of in the center of the foundation and you can see here I'm not leaving much to the top. All right, so we want to glue both of our pieces onto our foundation and we want to let this dry for just a few minutes before we start to work on it. 
Once you have both pieces glued and you know that they're secure, you can go ahead and thread your needle with two yards of thread. Again, you can use whatever you're comfortable with. I'm gonna be using the white 1G today. And when you thread it on, you are gonna put a knot in the very end of your thread. I put a knot and then I've trimmed the thread here near the end of it. So now I'm gonna set one of these to the side so that I can start to work on this piece. So from where I'm at, I'm going to come up through the foundation right at my stone. So I'm gonna come up here at the bottom just because it's easier. So I'm gonna come up through the bottom and you can see there I'm almost touching the cabochon. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull this all the way through. Now I'm gonna be using my size 11 seed beads first. And I'm gonna pick up two 11s I'm gonna drop them all the way down. And I'm going to kind of push them up right against where the thread's coming out. And then you can see here that I've pushed them down against the cabochon. So once you get it into place, then you wanna take your needle and go down through the foundation right after that second bead and I'll pull this through. So now I'm gonna take my needle and come back up through the foundation right before that first bead there. And then I'm gonna take my needle and go through those two beads. I'm gonna pick up two 11s. I'm gonna let them drop all the way down Again, I want them to go very close to my cabochon and I'm gonna push them up against the other beads that are already there. And then I'm gonna take my needle and not go through the bead like I just did. I'm just gonna go right down through the foundation right after the second bead that I just added. And I'm gonna pull this through. Okay, so from where I'm at, I'm gonna count back three beads. One, two, three and I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come up through the foundation right before that third bead. I'm going to pull it through and then I'm going to take my needle and go through all three of those beads. So we're gonna do the same thing all the way around. We're gonna pick up two 11s. We drop them all the way down. You want to push them up against the beads that are already in place and then take your needle and go down through the foundation right after that second bead. I'm gonna count back three beads, so one, two, three and I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come right up through the foundation right before that third bead there. Pull it through and go through those three beads. So we're gonna do this all the way around to form these around the cabochon. Okay, so once you go all the way around, if you only have room for one bead, that's fine. Put in your one bead. And then you want to come through all the beads around this circle again, just connect them all together and pull them all together. And you can see here that I'm exiting here at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my needle and I'm going to go down through the foundation. Make sure not to get the thread caught there. And so that this part is complete. Now, right here where my little crossbar is, I'm gonna come right up through the foundation on the other side of my 11s, right at the bottom of that cross. And you wanna try to get it as centered the best that you can. So just take your time with this part. Okay, and that's pretty well centered there for where I am at. I may come over just one more little smidge here. Uh. There we go. 
Okay, so I've come through and now it's time for cup chain and we are going to put our cup chain right here. So if you purchased a kit for me, you will have gotten a strip of cup chain that is 20 cups long. You want to cut that strip in half. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so once I get that 10, so two, four, six, eight, 10, I'm gonna take my scissors because it's our little links are thin enough that we can cut that little bar apart. You can also use a pair of wire cutters for this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the thread up this way and I'm gonna take my cup chain and I'm gonna lay it down here around the bottom of my cabochon. Now I've got two, Let's see, two, four, five, two, four, five. Okay, so I want that middle bar right there to be centered at my little thread. So two, four, five. Okay, so right there, I want it centered just like that. Now, where it's at, while I've got my finger still kind of on it right here, I'm gonna take my needle and you see it's coming out right here. So I'm gonna come right to the other side of the bar and I'm going to go down through the foundation right here on the other side of the bar. And uh, this is the only thing that will drive you bonkers about this until you get it tacked on. So two, four, five. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to hold it right here. Make sure I get it centered. There we go. And I'm going to come down through the other side just like that so that when I pull, now that will be tacked in place. So now I'm gonna work around from where I'm at. I'm just gonna come up through the foundation between the 11s and the next little bar here. And then I'm going to make sure it's everything's pushed up against it. And I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come down through the foundation on the other side of my link here. Just like that. And I'm going to continue to tack my links in place just like I did with that one. I'll go ahead and do one more. So I come up through the foundation between the 11s there and my cup chain and then I come down through on the other side just like this and then I pull it together. So I'm going to continue to do this until I have each of these little beads tacked into place or my little bar. So I'll do this side and then I'll come back and I'll do this side over here. Once you have all your little cup chains tacked into place, this is what your piece will look like. Now, from where I'm at, I'm going to take a business card or a driver's license, a credit card, anything that you have, and I'm going to put it up against my cabochon and here at this last little piece of cup chain. And I'm going to use a pencil and I'm going to just make a line right there where that's at. Now I'm going to do the same thing here on this other side. I'm going to put it against here and here and I'm going to make that line. All right, so these are my little guidelines of where I will be working and where I will be starting and stopping on the piece. So one line may be longer than the other just because of where you have it at. If you think the line doesn't look even, you can kind of redraw out your line a little bit. Um, whatever, it, it helps. These are just guidelines that will help you. Now that I've got my guidelines, I'm gonna be using my size eight seed bead. And I finished on this side over here, so I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come up through the foundation right next to my cup chain and right on that line that I've got drawn. And I'm going to add beads just like I did here. I'm gonna pick up two eights, I'm gonna let them drop down I'm gonna push them all the way up to the line 
and then go through the foundation right after the second eight. And then I'm going to pull it out just like that. <laughs> Okay, then I'm gonna bring my needle up through the foundation again, right before those two eights. And I'm going to go through the two eights. Again, two eights. I let these drop down. Push them up against. Go down through right after the second eight. And then I'm going to count back three. One, two, three. I'm gonna come right up through the foundation right before that third bead there. And then go through these three eights. And I'm going to continue to add my eights until I get around to my other line. So as you put on your eights, I've gotten back around here to the end. I'm gonna pull this out here. You can see this is where I'm at. If I add one bead, it's almost perfect. If I add two beads, you can see that's gonna be too big. So I'm just gonna add the one bead and I will line all of my beads up at this point with these little beads here. Now, if you want, you can go through all of these beads again, but it's not necessary. So now I'm just gonna come up here right next to where my eight is. And now I'm going to be adding a line of three millimeters, 11s, and three millimeters. So we're gonna add those three millimeters exactly like we did all these other ones here. So we start out with two threes. Gonna let those drop. You go down through the foundation right after that second bead. Come up through the foundation and then go through those two beads. So we add them exactly the same. And you can see here, they're pretty well lined up with what I've got. So if I was to lay out my line here, this would be about what I've got. Now, once I cut this, if I feel I can get another eight in there, I can go back and put that there. But for now, I don't want to mess this up. So I'm just going to keep going and working this little fan shape that I've got. So again, I'm just like my regular beads, I'm gonna treat them just like if they were say a size eight or a size 11 seed bead. We put those on, we count back three, and then we go through those beads. So like I said, I'm gonna do a round of eights, or I'm sorry, I did my round of eights, now I'm gonna do my three millimeters, then 11s, then threes. So that way we get this whole bottom of this fan complete. So once you've gone all the way around and you've done your next few rows, you are done with this part of the beadwork. Now you'll notice here, I couldn't quite get another three millimeter in and that's okay. We're not gonna worry about that right this second. With this still on here, I'm not gonna tie this off or anything yet. I'm going to go through and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start cutting out my piece, okay? And you can see here, I am going to have some white, but again, I'm going to try and fill that in. So I'm just going to be very careful and start trimming around. Don't destroy all of this. Don't throw this away. You're going to need this for the post earring. The great thing about that little post earring is it does not take much cording at all or much uh, foundation at all. So it's really, really easy to use your scraps. 
Okay, so I'm gonna continue to cut this out and trim any little excess pieces that need to be trimmed. Okay, so I have my piece completely cut out. You remember I had a little spot right here. An eight will not fit in there, so I popped a little 11 just so I wouldn't have a white spot there. So now I'm going to take a piece of my felt and my E6000 glue and I'm going to put glue around the back of my piece here. Remember, we don't want to get close to the edges. So I'm going to put a nice little round of glue there with my E6000 and then I'm going to lay this onto the felt. And again, I want to reserve some of my felt so that I've got plenty of room or plenty extra so that I can do my little earring pad. So I'm gonna press down all the way around just to make sure I've got good contact with everything here. And then I'm going to trim this out as well. Once I have it glued and trimmed, this is what my piece is gonna look like. It's gonna be super soft on the back, so it's gonna be really nice when you wear this as an earring. So my thread is coming out here, so from where it's coming out, I'm just gonna take my needle and come down here to a corner and come through the corner. And I'm gonna hold both of my pieces together and I'm gonna pull some of my 15s down here and I'm going to start my edging with these 15s. I'm gonna pick up two 15s. My thread is coming out right here, so I'm just gonna come up about a two bead width through both pieces. And then, instead of coming back up this way, I'm going to come back around this way to come back through that second 15 that I added there. I'm just going to kind of put my fingers there and pull. We don't want these to be bricked. We are doing this like a running stitch. So I'm going to pick up one bead. I'm going to come right next to where I just come through. Again, both layers. And then I'm going to come through the bead that I just added. Pick up one bead, come through both layers go through the bead that I just added. And I'm going to continue to work just like this all the way around my piece, adding one bead at a time now. Okay, so you can see here that they're laying on their sides just like this. And this is what we want all the way around our piece. Once you've gone all the way around, this side, this is what your piece will look like. Now, I'm ready to add my little drops here along the bottom. So once I get here to the very edge on one corner, I'm going to pick up a drop and I'm going to add that drop just like if it was a size 15 seed bead. And I'll go right back through it again. Now, I'm gonna do a 15 and go through. If you try to put the little drops back to back to back, it's gonna be too bunchy. So you want to put a size 15 seed bead in between each of those. And then, like I said, we treat it just like if that drop bead as if it was a size 15 seed bead. Okay, we go right back through it and we just keep trucking right along. So I'm gonna add these little drops all the way down the bottom until I get to the next corner. And when you add them, it's going to look just like this. All right, so you can see I've been trucking right along, putting all my little beads in here, and I'm right here to the edge now. So I'm going to start back and I'm going to pick up, I'm going to pick up 115 and then I'm going to kind of test it and see. I think I'll be able to put one more 15 in there. So do the 15 and then I'm going to pop one more in here. And I'm going to test it and see and Yes, I think that's gonna be the perfect setup. 
So now what I'm gonna do is I am just going to continue to stitch through these 15s here along the edge. This will, number one, pull all of them together and connect all of them together. And I'm not pulling tight. I'm just pulling enough to pop the thread in and pull it through. But you can already see now how these are apart and how these are more together. So I'm going to do this until I get to the top. When I get to the top, I'm ready to put my little earring loop on there. And you may just kind of have to wiggle and get it in there. There we go. All right, so I know that right here is my center. I've worked to, you know, make sure that that's the case. So I need to look and see if there are two or three beads here along the top that will center my little bell. And I think there's gonna be three there. So I think it's gonna be one, two, three. If it's two, that's okay. But I'm gonna pick up six, five or six 15s. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me see what I did on these other ones. Yeah, I did six. Okay, so I'm gonna pop back three beads, one, two, three. And I'm gonna go through those three beads and then I'm gonna check to make sure that that's centered where I want it. And that's pretty well centered for the loop here. If I wanna test it out, I'm just going to, that. yeah, that's, that's pretty well centered. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna reinforce this loop again. And all I'm gonna do to reinforce that is I'm just gonna go through all six of those beads again and then through the three I was coming out of. Now I'm gonna do this a couple of times until I know and feel happy that this is secure. And then I'm going to continue to stitch around through the whole rest of the outer portion of my beads. So I am happy with that. So I'm going to continue around. And when I get here and I see that I got a thread caught here, that's all right. When I get here, I'm just gonna go through the drop the 15, the drop the 15, the drop the 15, all the way around until I can get rid of this thread. So to start the little topper, I have taken a scrap piece of my little foundation and I have got my leftover thread and I've put a little knot in the end of it. And I'm just gonna come up through the foundation here around the middle of it. I'm gonna pick up a little three millimeter pearl and come down through the foundation just like this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to reinforce this. So I'm gonna go through these beads again. So I'm just going to add, go through it. I'm not adding anything. I just want to make sure that this is tacked on really well. So that way, putting on and taking off the earring, it won't mess it up. So I'm going to pick a spot here next to the three millimeter pearl. And I'm going to come up through the foundation right there next to the pearl. And I'm going to use my size 11 seed beads. So let me lay some of these out here. I'm going to pick up seed beads. I am not really going to count them or anything like that. I'm just going to start picking them up and I'm going to lay them down around my pearl. Now, sometimes I get this perfect, sometimes not so much. But what I want to do is just like you see here, I want these pearl or these little uh, 11s to lay around my beadwork just like they're doing. And I don't want a really tight loop. I want it to be a little loose. So I'm just going to kind of check and see by adding that one other bead there, it looks like that's going to be a good fit. So I'm gonna go through two of these 11s here 
and just to check that fit again and I think that fit's gonna work really well. So I'm just gonna go through now and I'm gonna start tacking this in place and I'm gonna treat it just as if I had added these beads two at a time. So I, I just added these two so I'm gonna count back three and I'm gonna come up before those two or those three and then go through the three. And then I'll go through the next two beads just like if I added them. So quote unquote, I'm adding the two beads. I go down through the foundation. I count back three, one, two, three. And I go through those three beads. I'm going to quote unquote add two beads. So I'm gonna go through them there. Go down through the foundation, count back three, one, two, three, and I'm going to continue to do this until I have this whole little set tacked on. Now, you can also do um, like, you know, where you just tack the threads. You can do that as well. I can't think of the name of the stitch right here off the top of my head. Um, but you can do whatever works for you as long as all your beads are tacked on and they're all really nice into place. So once you know that they're secure and you're happy with them, I'm going to go through my ring of beads one more time. And then I'm going to do a ring of 15s. And I can add the 15s two at a time or I can add them all in one little ring but just from where I'm coming out I'm going to start adding these 15s so I'm going to add these just picking up two at a time just like I have been doing and going all the way around my 11s putting on my 15s so once you have all your little 15s around, then you can finish off the thread on the back and you have this part finished. Now, if it's not 100% circular and it's more of a little bit of an oval shape, that's okay. Or like I have one little bead that's kind of sticking out here. Again, that's okay. It's, no one is going to notice this or how the shape of this is. Um, because we still are going to put another layer of 15s on. So don't worry so much about that. Also, if somebody is that close to you during the pandemic that, um, you know, they can see that that's not a perfect circular shape in your ear, then they're too close. So this is what I have. And you can see that little piece worked out perfect. So now I'm going to take a little piece of what I have left over here and I'm going to find one of my little pieces and I'm going to glue this onto here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to take my E6000. And before I do that, getting ahead of myself here, I'm going to take my post and I'm going to glue my post on. So I'm gonna put a little dab of E6000 glue, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this off, and I'm going to center that pad onto what I've got. So I wanna get that centered. Now what I can do is I can also take and kind of hold this in place and I can put some glue here on the top of the pad. Or I guess I should call this the back of the pad. Okay, so I'm putting it on the silver part and then I'm just gonna take my little extra piece here. I'm gonna push it down and then I am going to let this dry completely and I'm going to trim it out and do a last round of 15s. So I've gone ahead and I have trimmed this. You can see I've left the backing a little bit larger than the front and I've done that for a purpose. 
because sometimes it's hard to get in there it's almost like if you're not careful, the back is too short. So let me, and mine is actually still a little bit wet. So I've got enough room where I can kind of stick my thread in there and start working. So this is where we're just gonna take our 15s. We're gonna add them exactly like we did here. So we pick up two 15s, we come through both layers. Now, because this is an eight millimeter pad, you may have to go through a layer at a time. You may not be able to get through both layers at one time. And that is all because the size of your pad. So I'm gonna kind of work around it here. And you wanna be gentle as you work. So pick up one, and I'm gonna come through both layers. And I'm just gonna work this all the way around. And again, if you hit the pad, it's okay. Go through one layer at a time pulling the beads exactly like I'm doing here. Once you've gone all the way around adding your little 15s, your post is almost complete. So I'm gonna go through one or two more little beads here, and then I'm gonna pick up some more 15s. I'm gonna pick up, I don't know, five or six 15s, whatever you wanna do. Okay, and I'm just gonna put those back up. Okay, and then since I centered this one over three beads, I'm gonna do the same thing here. So one, two, three. And you can see there, I've made my little loop. So I'm gonna go through and I'm going to reinforce this loop again. so that my loop looks just like this. Um, it will look a little wonky, or if it does look a little wonky, I should say, it's okay. Just stick your awl or something in there and that will straighten up for you. And then at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the beads here around the outer edge and tie this thread off. I have already gone through all the beads a couple of times to just pull them all together and reinforce. So now I am ready to just put me a couple of little half hitch knots in here and then be done with this part as well. And I almost have it finished. Ah, don't pop a bead. There we go. Okay, so now I'm just going to trim that thread there. And here comes the fun part. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna straighten that out with my awl so that it's straight. And I'm gonna use a pair of round nose and chain nose pliers. And this is an oval jump ring, so it has a hole in the side here. I'm gonna twist it to open it. I'm gonna thread on the earring component that I made and the flat posts and then I'm going to twist it back to close it so that now those are connected and I have a nice swinging, fun pair of earrings. Now, I did wanna show you, I like mine wider like this, but if you do not like it as wide, you can also do something like this. So to just kind of show you, that's how much smaller this one is compared to this. So guys, I hope you enjoyed learning how to make these poppin' paparazzi earrings. I do have kits for sale on my website for these yellow and gray, these beautiful purple ones, and this kind of teal and bronze. I will tell you the teal and bronze is very limited because when I went to reorder more of these cabochons in this teal color, um, they were sold out. So basically the kits I have for now in this color will be it until we get some more of those teal ones in. I do have this step-by-step -step pattern for sale on the website as well as all the materials that you would need to make this project. There are some beautiful colors of these 
18 millimeter cabochon, so make sure to check those out. Also, be sure if you did not see last week's video, make sure to go back and check out these beautiful pendants that I did with my friend Ranga Shree and the necklace. And this was from February 8th and February 9th. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fabulous week and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.